Hey Trevor, I want to start making videos. What camera should I use? Just use your phone, bro. No way, man. I want to make cinematic videos. Do you want to sell houses or do you want to be a filmmaker? Um. If this is your first time here, my name's Trevor, Hollywood editor turned full-time realtor and YouTuber. On this channel, I teach realtors and other entrepreneurs to create better videos so they can sell more houses and whatever else you sell. If you want to sell more stuff, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down there and smack the bell so you don't miss out on future content and you can be ahead of the curve. Today, I'm going to show you the basic camera equipment you need to get started on YouTube and give you some tips on how to use it. If you follow these simple tips in this video, most of them are free, your stuff is going to look way better than any other agent in your market. At the end of this video, I'm going to tell you the one thing that every one of you should buy right now for 10 bucks. It's going to change your filmmaking game forever. You may not believe me, but your camera barely matters. Look at some of the biggest YouTubers on the planet. Look at Mr. Beast. Enjoy it while it lasts. Look at PewDiePie. How's it going everyone? PewDiePie here. PewDiePie. Welcome to my very first non-gameplay video. The biggest YouTuber of all time. Look at their older videos and they look terrible. Even their new videos, their production value isn't that amazing. I mean, every once in a while they'll spend some money to spice things up, but you look at their regular videos and it's just like, it's just average looking and subpar even looking sometimes production value. So your, your camera barely matters. Your videos essentially consist of two things, picture and sound. What camera should you use for good picture and good sound? If you bought a smartphone the last two, three, four years, it's probably amazing. It probably shoots in HD, shoots in 4K, probably shoots slow motion, shoots time lapses, has an awesome microphone. You can make incredible stuff with just your phone. In fact, I just bought this phone, the iPhone 11. I've got a video about it right up there you might want to check out. If you want a real camera with a little more control, my suggestion for a camera around five or 600 bucks is the Canon M50. It's got a pretty simple user interface and Canons, they look, they look great. My wife and I've had a bunch of them. Some people create their videos with a GoPro. I just bought a GoPro Hero 8 because I've never had one before. It's my first GoPro. I got a video about that right up there if you want to check it out. GoPros are great if you're into action and adventure and you're going to be underwater and climbing mountains and doing crazy stuff and mounting your camera on things. They're great for those things. They're also fine for just doing a talking head video like that. If it was between a GoPro and say a Canon M50, GoPro is going to be a little bit less expensive. Which one would I choose? Well, it depends on who I am. If I live by the beach and I'm going to be swimming with sharks and sailboarding and doing all crazy stuff, I for sure get a GoPro. If not, if it's just going to be a video for me to do talking head videos like this, I'd get the Canon M50. It's going to look better because it has a bigger sensor and better glass and some more higher end things that will just make the image look better. But the GoPro isn't bad at all. And a lot of people do all their videos with a GoPro, even green screen stuff. So either one is going to be just fine. What camera do I use? Well, in the beginning, I use my iPhone a lot. And I still use iPhone video in a lot of my videos. And guess what? Nobody can tell the difference. Nobody goes, well, I can tell that you recorded that part on a nice camera. And you recorded that part on your phone. So I'm not going to watch your videos, Trevor. N nobody cares, like zero people. The camera I use now is the Panasonic Lumix GH5. That camera came out a few years ago, but even if I was going to buy a camera today, I would still buy the Panasonic Lumix GH5. Why? Because there are zero cameras on the planet that can do everything a Panasonic can do, the GH5 in particular, at this price point, like, like not one. And now the price is even better. They're like way less expensive than they used to be. So if you're looking for a, an upgrade that does everything, um, this thing is pretty great. I've got a video, in fact, about when I first bought my camera up there that's kind of fun. And what about lighting? Most people just light their videos like this. They don't even think about light. They stay in a room, there's no overhead light, there's light, and it looks, it looks, it looks awful. How much better does this look? I'm just standing in front of a window. It's late in the day, so there's not even that much light, but it still looks a thousand times better than just using the lights in your ceiling. This is how most people record their videos. They'll put the phone too far away, so the mic's too far away, and they'll use overhead lights like this, so the lighting on my face is not good at all. This is not the way to shoot a video. Never, ever do this. One thing you can do is try to find the good light. I'm still in the kitchen. It's still echoey. The audio is probably a lot better here, although still echoey, but this light is terrible on my face, like all these shadows and stuff. What can you do if you don't have additional lighting? Here's, here's a power trip. trip. 
Here's a power tip, watch this. I'll go over here, have the light in front of me. <gasps> Look at this, it's magical. This is a trick I use all the time. You just hold out the phone and you spin around like this. Bad light, bad light, bad light, bad light. I'm looking at myself and then, <gasps> Oh, like glorious, beautiful light because the light is in front of me and I'm kind of looking up a little bit so I don't have, I don't have the shadows on me. So that's something that's gonna next level your videos. What do I use? Well, in the beginning I used big old bulky soft boxes and you can tell by the way I said that that I don't use them anymore because they are big and bulky and a pain to set up to take up a lot of space. Leaving them to set up my office didn't really work great. So I got rid of those, gave them to my son and I bought a couple LED light panels. These are great. Now the LED light panels, the light's not gonna be just as they come as nice as a soft box, but because they are so much more convenient, they're flat, they just sit up against my wall all the time and I just pull them out when I wanna, when I wanna shoot something. And I recently upgraded a little bit, spent 50 bucks on a couple little tiny soft boxes that go on the front of these LED lights that makes the lighting look a little bit more confused, confused, diffused, and a little more even. So if you're just getting started and you wanna do something other than a window, I recommend LED lights like these. There's a bunch of options. I don't, you know, the, all the brands are pretty similar. Plus they're also, you know, easily dimmable and you can change the color temperature. So the price to value ratio is pretty awesome. What about audio? Well, marginal video can be forgiven. Bad audio is unforgivable. If people can't understand you, it's garbled, there's too much background noise, they're just gonna click off your video. The microphones on your smartphone are probably amazing if you bought a phone in the last two or three years. So those are probably fine and maybe all you ever need. I just bought a 16 inch MacBook Pro. If you want me to do a video on that computer, which I love, uh, let me know in the comments below. Should I do a video on the 16-inch MacBook Pro? The mics on that are incredible. So are the speakers. So if you're just recording with your webcam, which is another option, pff, dude, just, just do that. It look and sound pretty dang good. This is what I look and sound like sitting in front of my MacBook Pro using nothing more than window lighting. I'm using the web camera and I'm using the built-in microphones, which are supposed to be pretty good. What looks better, the picture in this using the webcam or the video on my iPhone? Also, what sounds better, the iPhone audio or the webcam audio, the built-in mics on the, on the laptop audio? Let me know in the comments below. If you need something a little more than the mics on your phone or your laptop, I've got a really inexpensive option. You can get a lapel mic. Hold on. Here you go. You can get a lapel mic for 20 bucks. This is a Boya, B-O-Y-A. The brand doesn't matter in this price range, like 20 bucks. They all sound about the same. But for 20 bucks, you can get a lapel mic with like a 10 foot cord and you can be across the room and have the mic clipped here and boom, your audio is gonna sound great. And for like 30 bucks, you can get a dual-headed lapel mic, you just plug into your camera, your phone, computer, whatever, and you're gonna sound pretty dang great for really inexpensively. There's really not a better value in mics. I've got a video about audio right up there if you wanna check out and learn more about audio and microphones, but let me give you a couple tips. There are two things that are super important to get decent audio. Number one is to have the microphone close to you. Right now, my mic's right here. I've got a shotgun mic that is pointed at my mouth and it's probably like no more than like you know, 10 inches from my mouth. That's one reason the audio sounds good. If I had this expensive microphone, you know, 10 feet away from me, it would sound way different than having it right here. So number one, get the mic close to you. Here is what audio sounds like using an iPhone with a mic close to me. This is what I look and sound like with my iPhone at arm's reach from me. It looks pretty decent and it sounds pretty good. Yeah, it doesn't sound as good as my thousand dollar mic up there, but it sounds decent and it's plenty. Nobody's gonna call you out for using your iPhone microphone for video or audio. And I'm using the front facing camera. So it's, it's plenty adequate for both. So number one, you wanna make sure that your microphone is close to your mouth, probably no more than arm's reach if you're using a mic like your phone. And number two, you wanna be in an environment that is acoustically friendly. That means you don't wanna be in a kitchen. Lots of hard services. The sound is bouncing everywhere and echoing. You wanna be in a room that's got you know, maybe carpet and furniture, maybe curtains if you have those anymore in your house, but things that will stop the sound and prevent the echo and make you sound really good. So that's it, two audio tips. Keep the microphone close to you and record in a location where there are lots of soft surfaces to absorb the sound so it doesn't echo. Also, when you're outside, make sure you're like not near a freeway or a road, lots of traffic, because chances are 
your mic is going to pick that up. Did you just hear that horn honk out there? Maybe you did, maybe you didn't, but I've got a shotgun mic, so it's, uh, it's pointing at my mouth. So it should be okay. You may not have even heard it. Oh, I promised the one thing you should buy for 10 bucks that's going to take your filmmaking to the next level. Stand by. This. Tripod, 10 bucks, link for it down below. Doesn't matter which one you get, but a tripod will stabilize your footage. Nobody wants to watch your shaky cam footage. Get a tripod, you can stick this on a desk, stick it on top of your monitor, record yourself, and your stuff's gonna look, look way better. You're welcome. If you are serious about upping your video game, you should totally check out my free masterclass at videosecretswebinar.com. There it is, and there's a link for it down below. It's free, dude, it's going to level you up. And also check out that playlist right there. I got a bunch of awesome tips about video equipment, which is one of the fun things about filmmaking. If you learned even one new thing from this video, go ahead and smash that like button and hit subscribe. Because if you don't, it's gonna weigh you down your conscience. You're gonna feel that guilt like forever. And you don't, you don't want that, do you? I cannot wait to see your iPhone videos that look like cinematic masterpieces.